Happy Tuesday, and welcome into the PHNX Sun Devil Show. I'm Anthony Totry. We got Eric Ruby in the passenger seat, who might be doing some driving today. We've we'll got see. Ralph Amson joining us as well. Always a pleasure to have Ralph with us here on the PHNX Sun Devil Show. We got DJ Jacob Franklin behind the Mac, making all the magic happen. Guys, if you're new here, do us a favor. Leave a five-star review. Let us know what you enjoy about this podcast. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We're going to have a ton of fun whether you're an Arizona State Sun Devil or you are, you know, somebody down south in Arizona Wildcat, okay? Because today we're going to be talking all things athletic director. And for once, Ralph, for once we're not talking about Arizona State and the athletic director issues that the Sun Devils have had over the years. Today it's all about the Wildcats and Dave Hickey no longer having a job uh, in Tucson Last night, if you guys didn't see the news, I want to say about 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, the University of Arizona sent out a press release announcing that they had parted ways with Dave Hickey. Um, and there wasn't really a, a total explanation behind it. As the hours kind of passed, there were reports kind of speculating uh, that it had something to do with, with finances, part of it with the, the Jed Fish contract and all that stuff. Uh, but... For both of you guys, I'm curious, just your initial reaction to that news coming out yesterday. Copied us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my As simple as that, yeah? Yeah, I feel ripped off. It's like, they can we at least stick. find ours first? They you took know? our shtick. Yeah, I, I, would, I love the idea that there there's some reality in which someone is going to interview for both positions. <laughs> I, I mean, I absolutely know that's not the case. That's not how uh, athletic administration works. You know, typically you want to go with somebody that's very familiar with your culture, with your school um, and everything like that, which is uh, maybe why uh, Arizona State has uh, nobody on deck. Yeah. Um, that they just don't, uh, nobody is familiar with the culture in the school because everything changes so fast in, in, in Tempe. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure both presidents in on some level have some type of succession plan. But I, I do, my initial reaction to it when I saw it uh, come in from Michael Lev, I was just like, well, uh, can we just have our own thing? <laughs> well, it's to me, I was like, okay, yeah, they're copying the flow, right? They're biting the style, but you know, it's to be expected. I was shocked that they let this man make the hire. For their head football coach. And then like a week later, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, bye. Uh, for, of course, reasons that are probably financially tied. But at the same time, why are you letting this man hire such an important position or any position for that matter right before you're about to kick his ass out? Like, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Yeah, they were talking on the PHNX Wildcats show the other night just in terms of there's, I guess, an audit supposed to be coming out on Thursday and it doesn't look good for the university and I guess the entire purpose behind Hiki kind of getting bounced is kind of a scapegoat, right? That's the thumbnail title. Uh, and being the scapegoat for Pres President Robert Robbins. Um, and it's it's interesting you bring up the the fact that he let Dave Hickey make the hire, right? Or he let Dave Hickey make the hire uh, in terms of Brent Brennan. And he wasn't at the, the press conference. He wasn't at the introductory press conference, which immediately feels weird. If Michael Crow did that for Kenny, like everybody would be up in arms. But it, it almost feels like this is a way of completely removing himself if that hire doesn't go the way maybe fans would like for it to go or the way that, you know, Dave Hege thinks that it would go. But for me, <clears throat> I think it is the 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 most interesting part about this whole thing 
And, and for some reason, this was my initial thought, is whatever exterior force that you believe in, right? Whatever religion you fall under, whatever that God or force is, I just feel like doesn't like the University of Arizona because it seems like time and again, shit hits the fan. And even before it was good, even before it was sweet, right? With Jed Fish and Tommy Lloyd, you had Kevin Sumlin and Sean Miller, who they had their own issues. And then the sun's shining in Tucson again. And then, oh, the circus monkey gets loose again. And all of a sudden there's problems in Tucson. So whatever cosmic force is doing what it's doing, it, it must bleed maroon and gold at some point. Because let's be clear, Arizona State, they've, they've had their own issues with Ray, with Herm, and all those guys. But it is a very interesting situation in the timing of it all feels very very weird yeah i mean well it is fascinating that like gambling legalized in the state of arizona and then like university of arizona being a fan of university of arizona like the entire experience is like on par with the same peaks and valleys of like i'm riding a heater five team parlay and then the next day <laughs> i miss all five i'm broke my kids can't eat like it's <laughs> And this isn't like this isn't to disparage University of Arizona because God knows we have our own problems, but it 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 has been um, like you have to try to have this level of instability in an institution. Going back to Greg Byrne, a Sun Devil, their previous athletic director where they had issues of the head football coach cheating on his wife. They had you know. Uh, pretty serious accusations uh, with the track program, you know, uh, it, like it, 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 they've, they have had all of this drama for all of this time. And at the same time, you do have to give them credit for the level at which they're able to bounce back <laughs> given all of this adversity, yeah. whether it's the basketball program or the women's basketball program or uh, baseball before they lost Jay Johnson to LSU, who went on to win a college world series. Um, and that, and getting 10 wins with Jed Fish only to like immediately end up back in like carousel chaos. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I mean, Tucson's a college town, like they're ride or die, but they've been doing a lot of dying. lately. <laughs> yeah. And you're just kind of mentioning the, uh, like overall looking at it, like, Oh, U of A. Wow. They bounce back. Like, Oh, how, how good for them. And I just remember two, three months ago, how University of Arizona football is going to be a dynasty, college football playoffs every year. Jed Fish was going to get a 10-year extension. He was going to ride out into the sunset in Tucson. And it's like, it almost feels like that was six years ago at this point. Like, so much has changed. And yeah, they've had some key players stay and their basketball program is doing fine. Of course, I'm sure they've had some losses that they're regretting as well. But it's almost like, man, like, wouldn't you rather just be consistent? Because yeah, you're hitting the high highs, but it's got to hurt. And and trust me, like we know that it hurts. Like we know the lows low, the lowest of lows. We saw Eastern Michigan, man. Like we we saw all of that. But I just I don't feel bad for them, but I'm more just kind of like amazed it's baffling. The the high and the peak where they hit was so short. It was so short. I feel like for for both ASU and Arizona, it's just a repetitive kick in the balls. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what it is. Like, they're just next to each other, and when something's going wrong at Arizona, the shun is signing for Arizona State, and then it swaps. Like, there isn't ever a time, and, and I can't think of two universities, to be honest with you, that have as much problem staying out of the news as Arizona State and Arizona have just over the last couple of years. It's crazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you know what? I would actually appreciate some stability in Tucson because it would make my life better. <laughs> the like get, getting like the the shrapnel from the last week as an Arizona State fan just poking your head onto the internet just to see what's going on. And everybody in Tucson is in a terrible mood all of the time. And they're riding these super high highs. But it's like it, it like this last week has been insane, even from even from the perspective of being an Arizona State fan. If yeah. you have anything to say about what's going on at, at University of Arizona, well, they're all in a very bad mood right now. <laughs> you know, like I had I had a wonderful 30-minute conversation with your boy Mike Luke this week. Love the guy. 
Uh, and then I had a few online conversations with his counterpart that made me want to walk into <laughs> the ocean never to return. But like, I also understand that like the idea that he caused me any type of grief whatsoever is going to give him a tingle up his leg. I don't yeah. want to cause that. So I'll just say my week was fine. But like at, at, at the end of the day, like I would love for my neighbor's boss to treat him better so that he doesn't get mad when I leave my trash can out on the curb one hour longer than I'm supposed to. Like they are pissed off yeah. all of the time, like exposed nerves, raw, very, very emotional bunch right now. Yeah. And I, I just, like I, I just I'm I'm empathetic and I would like for things to be better for you. So you will just leave me alone for a minute. <laughs> totally valid. Totally valid. It is they are ultra sensitive as of late. January 2024 has been the longest year for all, all Wildcat fans. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you be sensitive to like if all of that was happening to you? But it's the type, it's the type of sensitivity that is very confusing. So like, uh, as an uneducated, you know, went to Arizona State, got a liberal arts degree. So of course they don't think anything of me and my education, but I read $240 million missing. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's bad. And then you have Arizona fans coming to the Little Rooms, but it's not bad for the reason that you think it's yes. bad for a different yeah. reason. And, all, and all, we're the only people that can define what bad is. So God forbid anybody else have an opinion on like the misery that we're going through only we get to decide what makes us miserable and how and how we're going to react it and like and, and and it is completely unhinged at this point like somebody mismanaged some money at your school the some money. facts the facts oh, it's a quarter billion is a little bit I don't get to use the phrase often, but like somebody mismanaged a little bit of cheddar down in Tucson, <laughs> right? Like, I, I don't know what the EG's bill is, but like something is wrong. That's all I know. All I know is something is wrong. And drawing a straight line from A to B is that like a bunch of money missing over here might affect the things over here because it's, it is all connected. Mm -hmm. And, and I, they swore up and down for the last two weeks leading into Jed fish leaving for Washington, that one thing didn't have anything to do with the other. And it's looking more and more like, uh, like if you had a budget issue in your life where you couldn't pay your light bill, like the idea that you would be good at managing every other part of your funding, like every other bills getting paid, but one, okay. Like, no, there's gross mismanagement going on at University of Arizona, but I'm not allowed to comment on it. I've been hearing for two years how dumb we were for inviting kids to tour Arizona State exactly. during COVID restrictions and having quarterbacks' moms pay for plane tickets. And all the while, me being like, yeah, you're right. We suck. We messed up. We deserve it. Can't wait for the NCAA to just let us know what what it is that we're we're, we're facing like I'm, I'm looking forward to the future all the while they're just like uh scum devils or what, what whatever it is that they think actually makes us feel bad yeah um we don't have those type of feelings we went to school in tempe we feel good all the time yeah so like i don't i don't actually understand what it is that we're allowed to say or do they're just <laughs> always mad we got a tiptoe now. We got a tiptoe because you have a quarter billion dollars missing. Listen, I didn't it. do it. it. Has nothing to do with me. I don't know. Maybe you did, man. Maybe you're the reason that they lost the two hundred forty million. Feels like it. My mentions feel like it. <laughs> they do want to take it out, and, and I mean, part of it could just be because, like you said, like they're a college town, and you know, you're living in Tempe. You're going to ASU. Like life is good, and yeah, sure, ASU football messes up. Okay, they mess up recruiting. Like we'll take our lumps, whatever. We're gonna go on with our life. But when you're in Tucson, that's all you have, and when the only thing that you have, the only thing that you put all of your time and your energy and your effort into, just betrays you and stabs you in the back over and over and over and over again. It's like a toxic relationship. It's like one month you're vacationing together and you're having a great time and you're laughing and oh my god, this is amazing. We're gonna be together forever. And the next month you're screaming at each other, throwing each other's crap out into the street. Like it's over and over again. And I don't blame them for coping, but it would be nice not. They to just, be the thing they use their coping out against. Well, and we have Wildcat fans, obviously, here in the office. And it is, it is, it is to your point, Ralph, 
You can't tell them, like, they get to tell you why they're mad for this specific reason. You don't get to say, you don't get to say the facts of the issue, right? Because I have never seen in, in my entire life, an entire, outside of maybe what goes on in Colorado with, with Dion. That's a totally different fan base. You've seen Game of Thrones? Those are the White Walkers out in Boulder. That's the way they run things over there. But when it comes to the Arizona Wildcats, it quite literally is a fan base that goes from hot to cold so damn fast. In a span of 12 hours, you can pop on to the PHNX Wildcat show from last night and you can go through the comments and you can see people losing their shit that Dave Hickey is gone, the world is on fire, oh my goodness, like save the babies, carry the boats, do something to help us. And by morning, it's sunshine and rainbows. It's everything's right. Dave Hickey needed to leave. Robert Robbins is king of the world and everything is okay. And somehow, somehow, it's all going to be fine in Tucson in a 12-hour span. It is absolutely mind-boggling to me that it's that's just, the way it functions. It feels like an exposed wire. I'm like, it, it, like something as innocuous as like, oh, I think the university misplaced $240 million. And they're like, excuse me, excuse <laughs> me, we're going to misplace 240 million dollars <laughs> and we're just aware of it beforehand so don't you dare they're more upset if you get a single detail of their misdeeds and mismanagement wrong than they are about the fact that they hate their president their athletic director is gone after going to san jose to pick up the head coach that finished second place in his search last time yeah right like they're the i don't know I don't know, it, like everything about what's going on right now, and we do it too, right? I get it. When, when, when you're in the midst of those emotions, we do it too. But like not really having anything to be emotional about and watching somebody throw a tantrum with no attachment to it whatsoever is very weird. It's like going to a grocery store and watching a kid like hit the floor and roll around because they can't have a candy bar. Right. Like, and then that's, that's what we're in the middle of right now. Like, like probably the most fascinating thing to, to me has been this. Okay. Uh, I work with somebody named George Reister. Arizona fans are so mad at him right now. It's not even funny, right? He said, he said, you're probably going to lose Jed Fish no matter what. And he, he basically presented Jed's fish case for leaving. That ultimately he did want to stay, but he left. Yeah. Him being gone is to me immaterial. The reason he's gone, he's gone. Who cares what the reason is? He's not around anymore. But ultimately what it came down to for George was, they had a memorandum of understanding, an agreement for like 5.1 million a year escalating from there, like five years, 25.5 million. Never, never going to add up to 54 million. Like think about it in deal or no deal terms. You have the case with $500,000 in it. Pretty lady over there has the case with a million in it, but you have x-ray vision. Like you're not going to trade cases. Like, <laughs> yeah. be, be real for a second. They're like, oh, but his word, he, he needs to be a man of his word. If somebody called right now and told me they have $27 for me, not an extra $27 million, but $27 for me to just get up and walk off this podcast right now, I might do it. Like, that's Chipotle money or Brio Express. Brio Express, I apologize. <laughs> but, but, like, you say all that to say this. Like, it comes down to this. Either Jed Fish was not allowed to sign the Memorandum of Understanding which would have given University of Arizona another $6 million buffer. It would have changed his buyout from, from my understanding, $4 million to $10 million, right? Yeah. They probably still lose him because Alabama gave Washington $12 million to get Kalen DeBoer out of that contract. So that, that was cash on hand that they had to buy out Jed Fish if they wanted to. So they probably still lose him anyway. But this nobody is addressing this of whether or not the university – told Jed Fish not to sign the Memorandum of Understanding. Because if Dave Hickey told him not to sign that, then he cost the university, which is already in financial hell, or is going to be in financial hell. Again, I don't understand. I went to ASU. I don't know anything. <laughs> but if he cost them $6 million, that pretty much to me seems like a fireable offense. If I lost $6 million of, of my employer's money, I'm probably not going to work there anymore. Yeah. And so like, I, and again, but these things aren't connected. Right. So like my, my whole thing right now is everybody's mad at George. 
for pointing out that like it's very very possible that because university of arizona didn't protect themselves against this they lose out on six million dollars with all the other financial mismanagement you can't have that going on maybe that's the reason you let him go but it has been very interesting to see all the arizona fans say uh it's the way that jed fish left he's not a man of honor uh it's the way he left because he was presented with an opportunity he had a choice to be a man of honor or not be a man of honor. And and $27 million wasn't enough for him to keep his word to Humberto Lopez or a couple other boosters or whatever, right? Keeping your coach wasn't enough to keep you from melting down on the internet for an entire week. Like, what are you talking about? Keep your composure, keep your word. You can't even handle somebody that you don't know and you've never met going to work somewhere else for 27 million more dollars. Yeah. Like, what do you, what, what do you, what do you think you would do in that situation? I mean, there is not a university of Arizona fan on earth that wouldn't just renounce their degree completely. Assuming they went, assuming they're not just a town. There's nothing wrong with being a townie. I'm grew up in town from a trailer park. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. But like, the idea that you wouldn't give up everything for that type of money when you can't even stop yourself from losing your mind on the internet over sports is absurd to me. No, you're Absolutely absolutely absurd. right. You're absolutely right. Bring up a, a ton of great points. We're going to continue this conversation uh, about the athletic director situation, both for Arizona and Arizona State. But I did want to get to Mikey's comment, if we can get up to it. And it's the best comment I've seen so far. There's obviously a lot of Arizona and Arizona State fans going at it in the chat. Mikey's comment is all that matters is ASU versus U of A is still the greatest rivalry between two schools in NCAA collegiate sports history. And if you want to go to some of those games between Arizona, Arizona State basketball, or when football returns to the Territorial Cup, you can get your tickets through game time. I personally have used game time a ton of times, three already this year, and we're only in January for concert tickets that I'm going to in Canada Vegas, San Antonio, they have it all over at game time. And they've got some phenomenal deals for you. If you don't believe me, check it out for yourself. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Down to, download the game time app, create an account, and use code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PHNX for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. We're talking about great rivalries, you know, consistent rivalries, some of the best. Can I tell you a terrible rivalry? You can. One of the worst rivalries that's ever existed. It's illegal Pete's versus your hunger because illegal Pete's <laughs> wins every single time. Listen, from bowls, tacos, salads, burritos, nachos, irresistible drinks, custom cocktails, beers. I mean, why are you not already in your car on the way to illegal Pete's right this second? Plus, they got deals every single day. If you missed Margarita Monday with $3 margaritas all day long, don't worry about it because guess what? It's Tuesday. What does that mean? Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. And they're $2. Plus, if you work in healthcare or education, take your team out to lunch at illegal Pete's on Tuesday and you can get buy one get one free on all entrees plus for all those U of A fans drinking your sorrows away happy hour 3 to 8 p.m. every day so head on over to Illegal Pete's your go-to spot for burritos buddies and beer and it tastes extra great when you're coping I love it I love it and I love the there's so many people in the chat just I'm going just, for each uh, yeah, I've, I'm, nobody's getting put up oh just, my goodness it's just it, funny. It, I will say it is nice for all of the U of A fans in the chat uh, I see a, a lot of you guys are first timers, which is nice because you, none of your handles are the ones that are like in my Twitter mentions <laughs> or my Instagram. Some of you have found my Instagram and now you're going through my comments there. It, it's incredible to see the level of devotion you have to that circus uh, in, in Tucson. But Ralph, I do have a question and, and for Eric as well, just in terms of the fact that, hey, Arizona State and Arizona now in play for an athletic director. I know there were people... Son of yeah. fans talking about, oh, maybe Dave Hickey should take the ASU job. That's not going to happen <laughs> uh, by any means. I don't want to misplace I don't, I don't want to misplace a quarter yeah, of a billion dollars. We don't need to place that much. We don't, yeah, we don't need to do that. Uh, but in terms of the positions themselves, the Arizona Wildcats and the Arizona State Sun Devils, which job is more attractive for a potential athletic director? Um... I think that there is definitely as as I think there's definitely a level of mistrust in both situations that like in in the same way that a lot of Arizona State fans didn't want to see Ray Anderson make a hire 
And f from what I've heard, maybe he wasn't as involved in bringing Kenny Dillingham on, on board as most athletic directors would be in his situation. But like the faith in the presidents, um, I'm not being political, university presidents, university <laughs> presidents alone. The faith in the presidents uh, is is at an all-time low right now. And so, I mean, as far as being um, an attractive job for somebody that's just looking to come up, you're probably going to get paid more at Arizona State, assuming that the the level, um, uh, the you know $1.5 million after all the retention bonuses and everything are factored in at Arizona State, probably a little bit more attractive than yeah. anything else. You know, be, getting more money better than getting less money. But pay attention, Jed Fish fans. So like, <laughs> you know, it, 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 like it, the idea, like arguing money with people who like all, don't understand that 54 and 27 are not the same and that negative 240 million is bad has been very annoying. I am so tired. I'm so tired. And just to go back, just one step back before we move forward, I apologize if I got any details of your financial mismanagement incorrect. <laughs> I'm a literature major, but please understand that had University of Arizona fans been like, did you hear that Ray Anderson is stepping aside because I don't know, he stepped on a baby or whatever? We would have been like, yeah, probably. Probably that was... That might have been it. That's the example know. you use. He stepped like, on it, a baby. It could have literally said anything, and we would have that's been fair. like, "Yeah, whatever it takes to like." Yeah. Get, no, that's that's totally fair. Um, but I I don't know. But in the Big Twelve, I think Arizona um, is a great fit. Could be very competitive. Uh, either one of these are like once in a lifetime jobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I don't think. I don't necessarily um, knowing that there's like one university president that might throw you under the bus for his own misdeeds, which I'm <laughs> getting uh, an inkling that maybe that's what's going on at university of Arizona. Yeah. And then another university president that every time you bring up needing more resources for football, he's like, uh, well, should we add curling? Like, <laughs> it's the turtle what? in the hair. One moves yeah. too fast and then r trips over his own feet. And then one moves wildly too slow. That's, yeah. that's that's what you have with both of these athletic directors. That's false with both of them. And to your point, it is like if you're going to play the game of which job is more attractive, it almost would be, you know, to also to your point, like, yes, these are once in a lifetime opportunities. But if you're choosing between the two, it's like, OK, which is the lesser of two evils when it comes to the university presidents? And right now, just from a recency bias, I think most people would say that you take the Arizona State job because give Dave Eakey a call. Look what's happened to him over the last 24 to 72 hours, right? I'm sure he was on top of the world when the, the Brent Brennan press conference, all that, just what, five days ago? He had the entire city of Tucson behind him. And here we well, are was, Tuesday, and it's gone. It was ultimately, it was an I told you so moment, right? This yeah. is, what, from what I understand, uh, the second time that the runner-up uh, was hired, right? Like uh, uh, President Robbins really liked Jed Fish. And so when it came time to fire Kevin Sumlin, he was still top of mind. Uh, Dave Hickey really liked Brent Brennan. I really like Brent Brennan. Like, it, and you get the opportunity to make that higher. And it, it's a pretty big, I told you so moment. You fly yeah. out to San Jose, you get your guy. He's got Air, University of Arizona connections. His brother played there. They got that video of him in the stands, which was, I thought was very, very yeah. cool. Um, also, it's weird to see like an old video and wonder if it was like something you were there for and then realize that you're old. That was like a lot to process. Um, but, but like, yeah, he, he had to be feeling pretty good. You get Brent Brennan in the, the, um, the boosters, uh, reroute a bunch of that money that was going to be meant for Jed fish to retain a very good roster that gave you your best year since, uh, what 2014 rich rod 10 and four. Um, and so yeah, huge best season in 10 years, you're going to retain a lot of that talent and you're going to get a coach that wants to be there. Very cool week. And then all of a sudden you are unemployed. <laughs> like that, that's, that's a, that's a lot to process. And then, and then just to see what, like what dots people are connecting mentally to, to like, what does this mean for the, 
for the university. If it was as simple as mismanagement, then I'm sure that they have other people in place that yeah. if they're not connected to that mismanagement of any kind, you can promote them. Arizona State football went through this with Sean Aguano, right? They had to look around the room and be like, all right, which one of you actually has clean hands? Because we got to get through <laughs> the rest of this season, right? So so Sean Aguano brings the Ohana and gets to take over for the rest of the year. Maybe they have somebody in place in Tucson like that. I don't even know what's going on at Arizona State. There's the college AD article that's floating around saying that we're not even like looking. Um, yeah, that crow's well, sitting on his hands pretty much. That would make sense. That'd make a lot of sense. Like I said, moving slowly. Very, very slowly. But Eric, well, what, maybe, what about you? Maybe Would you don't you? need an athletic director? I mean, I mean, if it depends who you ask. You ask Robert Robbins, you need somebody to take the fall for you at a certain point. Jeez. So you got, you got to have one, like at least that's a not a face. That's not an athletic director. That's a hostage. <laughs> that's a that's a paid hostage. That's tough. What about you, Eric? What well, would kind you of do? building off of that point of having somebody to blame. If I like, let's just say I am an athletic director, and for some reason I have the choice between Arizona State University and the University of Arizona. Right? There are a couple of reasons why I'm picking ASU. Number one is that Hickey's probably not going to be the only guy out of the University of Arizona who's going to lose their job in the next week or two. There's probably going to be a couple other people that they're going to find responsible. Yeah. And that's going to create a lot of instability, plus, of course, all the money that they've lost. And you know what? Both of these programs for football and basketball, they already have their expectations set, right? Like they're already like, hey, you need to come in here and these need to be in U of A's case, the way they're talking about retaining most of their players, that they're not going to miss a beat. And they were talking college football playoffs before. Yeah. So that's the expectation, right? For U of A basketball, it's like, all right, come on, like get some success in March Madness. Go deep into this thing and see if you can bring home something. And if that fails, if that doesn't work out, then you're just the AD that came in, replaced, everything went to shit, and then you're the next fall guy. You go to Arizona State, right? Not only is the football program on the precipice of being better, and you're going to get actually a lot of credit for helping build and fund that program three, four, five years from now, if they do indeed turn it around like we think they will. But ASU has also showed that you can get away with a lot of shit. They're not just gonna, <laughs> they're not just gonna fucking cut your tie like the first time you mess up. Like you can mess up, you cannot be great at your job, and you can still hold the job for a lot longer than you than Man. you should. So Man. if I'm picking, I'm going to the place that's not gonna make me the fall guy. That's actually gonna protect me instead of the other way around, where I'm out on my ass the first moment that there's some sort of trouble, even though it's a lot of it. You'll be Professor Eric Ruby in no time. Hey, also that. Also that. When I get fired as an AD, I'm still getting paid millions of dollars by the university. I'm fine. Like, I'm picking Arizona State. One class. I'm a <laughs> sun devil, man. Okay, so. <laughs> all right. So, on a very, very practical level, there is a hiring freeze. From yeah. what I understand at University of Arizona. Or, God, I'm like, I'm so paranoid at this point. Like, an employment chill. Like, whatever words will keep you off. <laughs> an employment what, chill. Get out the thesaurus. You, I've never heard that what, one before. <laughs> why don't you just pretend I said the right thing? <laughs> like, that's kind of where I'm at right now. So, um, th I think there's a hiring freeze. I think they're talking about raising ticket prices. I think, like, there, there's actually stuff going on to try to bring University of Arizona back financially that is – is going to make it a tougher gig um, at this point in time. I don't think there's anybody that, you, that if you were to come in from the outside, I doubt they bring in somebody from the outside, but I don't think it, that there's anybody who's going to come in from the outside and look at the programs and be like, oh, this person needs to be fired right now. Maybe there needs to be some more backbone. Maybe there needs to be some more supervision. Um, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think that, that there's any program that is going to just get um, flipped because they bring in a new AD, especially when you don't have the ability to really uh, budget to, to bring in better people, right? So Brent Brennan is being brought in at the rate that Jed Fish previously had, essentially, with a much yeah. higher buyout, much higher buyout. But like the, that, the idea um, that anything's really even going to be able to change if you take the University of Arizona athletic job um, it, it's going to be tough sledding, I think, for a couple of years before you're even allowed to do what it is you want to do to enact your vision, anything. Uh, but again, that's my peanut braised brain size understanding <laughs> of what it looks like to have $240 million missing. Yeah. Um, 
I think it probably impacts your decisions. But again, I'm an idiot. I don't know anything. <laughs> an employment chill. I'm going to be using that. Yeah, I like on. that. But look, I think I think in terms of the situation for for Arizona State, and it's funny, Sun Devil Spaces last week, you were talking about the the article going around just that Arizona State and Michael Crow kind of barely dipping their toe in the water in terms of trying to to seek out uh, a future athletic director. I think when it comes to something like this, like there is almost a little bit more pressure now on Michael Crow to get this right. Same same thing with the University of Arizona and Robert Roberts. Robert Robbins, whether they want to use the next AD as a scapegoat, whether they want to keep an AD on way longer than the fan base would like, like in Tempe, like there is pressure, I think, significantly more so now on Michael Crow than there was a week ago to make this move. Because I think he was able to sit there and say, hey, you know what? There isn't necessarily a, a giant rush on us to go out, get an athletic director before the start of the fiscal year or the end of this fiscal year, right? But when you look at it now, now it's like, okay, everybody in Tucson is talking about an athletic director. And you have this opportunity where think of it as if it was a football coach or a basketball coach or a baseball coach, right? And you have two openings at rival universities, okay? One goes and gets a guy, they have supreme success, and the other goes and gets a guy and they fail, right? I think at that point, in that specific scenario, the fan base would eat the university alive, whichever one failed, right? Because you had the opportunity. That's what it's going to come down to. Four or five years from now, whatever transpires with each of these athletic de athletic departments and their athletic directors, if one has success and one doesn't, the fan base is going to say, oh, Michael Crow, why didn't you hire this guy? Why didn't you interview this guy? Why is, it, why is he their athletic director and not ours? You took your sweet time. And the same thing with Robert Robbins in Tucson is, okay, we have to get this right, and we almost have to do it more so than Arizona State. Otherwise, there might not be a scapegoat the next time something like this happens. And who knows if Robert Robbins even makes it out of this whole situation. We'll see if that audit and when that audit potentially comes out on Thursday. It, it's a weird situation. All right. Are we taking odds? Audit <laughs> or NCAA notice of allegations? What Ooh. drops first? I mean, I don't think the NCAA violations are going to be dropping until we uh, hit the moon again. So I would say probably the audit comes out. I just, if if in my lifetime we could get either the notice of allegations or a new Frank Ocean album, I would take <laughs> either one of those. Can I get the Frank Ocean album instead? I, I pick that one. I pick that one. <laughs> Maybe they'll do a dual release. <laughs> Oh man, I, I think the audit's coming out before all. Like, there's then. even there's even fans coming after Jacob in the chat for being the moderator. Yeah, like, sorry, I'm telling you to be a decent human being, <laughs> but cool. I, I I do want to say this to like the Arizona fans in the chat. Like, this is your opportunity to say the one thing that hurts us so deep that we never forget it. Yeah. Like, you have a ch you have a real chance here to affect our lives. In, in a way that's like, that we're, we're going to leave this. We're going to think on it. Anthony's not going to sleep for the second night in a row. Yeah, like, exactly. you, th this is your opportunity, and you're wasting it on saying things like, um, ASU sucks at sports. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, that... Ralph, dude, come on. Ruin my day, hurts. man. Ruin my day. They're talking about... They're talking about the three deep. Okay? Earlier in the chat, they were talking about the three deep. They were talking about the three deep on the Arizona football roster. First off, nobody gives a fuck about the three deep. They go two deep max. If you're talking three deep, you're way too in the weeds, which I had somebody else in the chat tell us to go touch grass. You're the no. one in here talking about that. Like, it, it's, there's, again, the whole point of this argument where it started, right, about the five-minute mark where it was, okay, <laughs> something went wrong at the University of Arizona. This is what happened. Nope, you're fucking wrong. That's exactly what's going on in the chat. That's exactly what it is. You're making the point for Ralph for him by just going off. It's it's incredible to see in real time, to be completely honest with you. Hey, how can I celebrate your demise when I obviously don't even understand it? Exactly. You exactly. ended up you ended up down on the ground covered in bruises, blood, and spit somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> I'm just pointing out that that's where you're at, right? Do you need help up? Do you need a loan? What do you need from us? to help you <laughs> calm down. 
Yeah. What no, do guys, you want from us? Nothing's wrong. Oh, you're everything's right. You're fine. right. Everything's oh, fine. Right. Everything's that's fine. Right. Everything's going to be great. College football playoffs. They're going to win the entire thing in basketball this year. They're going to get a new athletic director. The $240 million is going to be wired back into their <laughs> pockets tomorrow. Guys, nothing bad is happening in Tucson. Everything's great. And you just it. don't understand if you think yep. differently. Negative Mr. and a negative is a positive. If everybody has an athletic director, nobody has an athletic director. I, I actually do stand by the fact I don't think you need an athletic director. Mm, well, again, I, I think you, I think just go, just go. It's funny. It's it's funny. Again, uh, Mr. Him in the chat is a is a is one I've never seen here before. So it's funny, Mr. Him one two three four. Hell of a name uh, if that's on the birth certificate. Uh, but commenting, dropping f bombs. But we're getting personal and need to chill, please. No, you're just coming off as soft. Look. You're clearly new here, so I'm just gonna tell you how I do things here. Um, I'm a hater, okay? I'm, I'm acknowledging that. My name's Anthony Totry. I'm a hater. If you don't believe me, just head over to DNVR Buffs. You can ask the Colorado fans. I've been at Dion Coach Prime's throat on social for since he got hired, right? And the same thing for the Arizona Wildcats. Go ahead, ask PHNX Wildcats' very own Mike Luke. It's the very same thing. So. I'm going to leave you with this before I tell you about where you can make some money, okay? Mr. Him, one, two, three, four. This one's for you, okay? I'm a hater. I'm acknowledging that. However, when you say you come off as soft and you're a hater, that makes you a hater, okay? So I just want you to understand that that's how that works, okay? So we could both be haters together. I just need you to acknowledge it as well, because I'm 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 being the bigger man here. I'm saying what's on my mind. Okay, I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with that. And if you're not, maybe you can head over to the Bet MGM Sportsbook app, make some money. I know U of A is definitely in need because you misplaced what 240 million of it. So. Put it on a parlay though. Exactly. I'm pretty sure he's an ASU fan. Maybe that's what they did. Bet MGM guys, that's where you guys can make some money. Download the Bet MGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android. Or visit BetMGM.com, sign up and deposit at least $5 into your newly created account and place a wager in the amount of at least $5 at standard odds price. And once you have placed a bet, you guys are going to receive $158 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. Sign up for BetMGM and use that bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $5 and you will receive $158 instantly. In additional winnings, regardless of your wager's outcome, check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Damon talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877 hope and y or text hope and y 467 New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help Michigan. 1-800-919-1023, Puerto Rico. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms. This promotional offer is not available in New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Okay, listen. Mr. Him. Let me, let me speak oh, to you're you. Oh, you're, you're going to talk to him too? Listen, man. Listen, <laughs> I... I understand where you're coming from. You're angry. You're upset. You've probably had a hard day. And I just, I want to reach out to you. And I want to recommend maybe getting away this weekend. Maybe take a trip to someplace fun, someplace authentic, someplace immersive, and a place that, frankly, nobody in the Valley does it better. And that's Gila River Resorts and Casinos because you can get rid of whatever is on your shoulders, all the weight that you're carrying around, that you're unloading in this chat. Listen, you can get all of that. You can get all that stress out at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Because not only do they have over 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, live table games, and there are multiple locations all across the valley. They also have the BetMGM Sportsbook as well. So if you want to get a little bit of action in, win some money, put a smile on your face, go ahead and do it at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. And if you're hungry, oh, you can go have any of their mini dining options. And heck, make it a staycation. Go for the weekend because they are a resort Get a nice pillow, lay your head on it, and relax. So go ahead and do that over at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit playatgila.com for more details because you do you, even if you're a hater, at Gila River Resorts and I Casinos. love it. Apparently, Mr. Him1234 is an ASU fan. So it's a shame I had to acknowledge my hatred, but, you know, it is what it is. That's, that's what we do here, okay? And, and look, I, I love the fact that, again, a lot of these people are new, and we're getting some new insults. Oh, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm used to the the usual ones. These are these are fun, guys. Keep spicing it up, man. I, I really do like it. Also, they gave me a new nickname. I got glasses. Glasses is my nickname. For those of you that don't glasses. know why I'm wearing glasses, I did not sleep last night. Like, n- not even this much. Okay, like zero hours. Very very delusional at this point. Okay, similar to you know the Arizona Wildcat fans. That's why but we all get along. It is. It is. 
Ralph, before we get you out of here, any final thoughts on just the last 24 hours in Tucson? Mind you, you got to get things 100% correct, okay? The verbiage has to be spot on. Otherwise, your mentions, uh, they they might get a little sticky. Yeah. Um, I just, so that other people don't have to, like, do the math themselves, because we know some of us have been mathematically challenged lately. After $158 in bonus bets, you still only need $239,999,842 to make up the debt that is either uh, currently exists or is going to exist in the future. I don't know. Everybody have a nice day. (laughs) Ralph Amson, thank you very much. We appreciate you for taking the time today, man. Beautiful. Beautiful. He said, I'm out. I'm I'm mic dropping. No more words. I'm out of here. Oh, my goodness. Look, there was... Somebody in our, our diehard Discord, I, I think it was Sharon in there earlier today, talking about some news going around potentially in the NFL surrounding Jim Harbaugh and all that stuff. Oh, I I'm know, sure you have your eyes I, look, on that. I, I know there's a lot of people that want to talk Dave Hickey, ASU, Arizona, the mismanagement of a quarter billion dollars. Again, I'm going to continue to say it the way they put 70 to 7 on a billboard. Maybe they should put that on a billboard. Uh, but I do want to take a pause in that for the for the day because – with Jim Harbaugh kind of around the the news, I, I got a an interesting story about Jim, just as the the type of coach he is, and how he at one point quite literally, like almost poached an ASU recruit. Okay, so I was at I was in high school. I think this was like 2016 around this time, right? And Connor Murphy was big, giant defensive end for Brophy. Had a bunch of offers. ASU was in his top five. He had connections to the Harbaugh family. Jim at one point had actually babysat Connor Murphy when he was like eight years old or something. And so to poach and get him away from any of the other schools, Jim came on a visit to Brophy, right? And it wasn't just a, oh, we're going to like meet and then I'm leaving. Jim by himself, no assistance, was at Brophy and went for the first half of the morning, class to class with Connor Murphy, was in there messing around with the iPads, doing everything in his power. Jim Harbaugh sitting in class to try and get this defensive end, who, mind you, had played like one year of high school football, to come play at Michigan. Now, he ended up committing to USC, which is, will tell you, I guess, all you need to know about Jim and his recruiting at that point in his career at Michigan. But my goodness, Jim Harbaugh did everything in his power to go and get this recruit out of Arizona. Going class to class is a little psychotic. Yeah, it's a it's a little psycho. He like he's in the back, he's raising his hand. Like uh, I know the answer. I know the answer. I'm just asking one. questions, and they're like, "Yes, Miss Mister Harbaugh, Harbaugh? Jim. Yeah, do you call him Harbaugh, Coach Jim? Co- coach Jim? Oh, please, please call me Jim. Call me Jim. Incredible, call me Jim. absolutely incredible. Same way that we got. Um, I know that was a little tidbit, kind of kind of random, but I guess with with Harbaugh's name kind of being surrounded, interesting little tidbit um, from I guess. Uh, a mention with with ASU, but same thing that I asked Ralph before we get out of here. Any final thoughts on everything going down in Tucson? Listen, it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna we're gonna have a fun time, guys. Both programs are trying to figure it out. You guys still are holding on to your high expectations. And if there's one thing that I've learned, is that when fans of the University of Arizona have extremely high expectations, they're met. of the time. So I am already happy and excited for everything working out in your favor, just like it always does. Oh my goodness. Look, we're going to leave, but everybody in the chat can feel free to comment or head over, become a diehard, go phnx.com, sign up for that diehard membership. And then you guys can find in the diehard discord all you would like because there's chats for ASU Wildcats. We actually had Mike Luke in the ASU chat this morning talking with the ASU diehard. So take that for what you will. We got a couple diehards in the chat. If you don't take our word for it, take it from them. A lot, a lot of benefits to becoming a PHNX diehard. Again, just head over to go phnx.com. But that is going to do it for today's show. We enjoy everybody, and I mean everybody in the chat today, guys. Do us a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, whether it's for us 
whether it is for PHNX Wildcats or anybody in between, go ahead, give us a follow at PHNX underscore son of You can follow me on social at Anthony underscore Totri. That's also where my mentions are, Wildcat fans. You can follow my main man, Eric, here at Eric Ruby. That is Eric with a K. And you can follow DJ Jacob Franklin at Jacob underscore Franklin four. But as always, go Devils and peace. <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor. 